I love arcade games. I love Centipede, I love Tetris, and I love Pinball. I met up with a friend to find out more about the history of Pinball and its dark past. I'm here at Satellite Lounge in Williamsburg, Brooklyn with tech editor of Popular Mechanics, friend of Rocket Boom, and pinball expert Seth Porges. Hi Seth. How you doing Molly? I'm good. So we're here to talk about pinball. What exactly is pinball? Pinball is a game that's been around since before the Great Depression. What you do is you put a metal ball on a plunger, you pull it back, it rolls down a playing field, you knock it around the flippers, you try to rack up as many points as you can before the ball falls back down again. So I hear that pinball has something of a dark past. Pinball has a very dark past. Today pinball is thought of as this really innocent, all-American, wholesome game. Didn't always be that way. It used to be this thing that was thought of as dark, insidious, evil. In fact, it was illegal in New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, most of America for more than three decades. Pinball originated in pretty much the late 1920s, early 1930s. It was a derivative of an old French parlor game called Bagatelle. Pinball games from back in the 30s and 40s didn't look much like modern pinball games. In fact, they didn't even have flippers. It wasn't until 1947 that the flipper was invented. And so pinball was illegal because it was considered to be a game of chance and not skill, and therefore gambling. So how's the game changed with the flippers? Pinball has changed in a lot of ways. It developed flippers, eventually it developed computer chips. Back in those days, they were purely mechanical machines. You know, these flashing lights and screens and animations. Then they eventually developed dot matrix animations, which really kind of added new depth to the play. It allowed storylines and modes and just the games to take on a whole new life. Do you know anything about the mechanics of the machines? How does it work? There's so much going on. Well, there's a little elf inside the pinball machine that oh. controls it. Um, no. Ever since 1977, most pinball machines were what are being called solid state, meaning they have computer chips which operate them. Before then, they were called electromechanical, meaning they're basically these complex Rube Goldberg machines with electrical circuits and really lots of metal touching metal, and if one thing went wrong, you never knew what it was. Yeah. But these days, it's like a computer game in a big cabinet. There's still a lot of cogs, still a lot of widgets going on. You open one of these things up, you will see a lot of gears, a lot of wires, a lot of circuits, especially these games, which are from the 90s. Today, things are a lot more streamlined and computers. Back then, though, it took a lot of big boards to get something like this done. These pinball machines all seem to have a certain style. They're, this is about cars, this is about monsters. They seem very male. Or oriented. Well, I think most pinball players probably are male, but I've met my share of women who really love the game. And you gotta say, like, all these pinball machines, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> they all have themes. And the designers, when they make the pinball machines, they start out with a theme oftentimes. These days are usually licensed mm -hmm. from movies or TV shows or brands like, you know, NASCAR or Iron Man. And they're really used as a starting point to develop the entire game. When did pinball become legal? Pinball became legal again in 1976 in New York City. This is after 34 years of pinball prohibition. In the 1930s and 40s, a lot of politicians sort of made their name attacking pinball machines. When LaGuardia came into office in the 1930s, he had a really easy time to get him against slot machines. Pinball machines were much harder for him to get rid of, so it became a sort of menace that haunted him for about a decade. <laughs> and it became pretty much the number one priority of his administration was rounding up pinball machines from New York City. In fact, the NYPD created pinball squads that would sweep through the city in prohibition-style raids, smashing machines before they put them on the barges and dumped them out in Long Island Sound. So what is, what is, why do we play this game? What, what do we get out of playing pinball? Well, you know, back in the day, people used to play it because they had a couple extra pennies left over after the breadline during the Depression. They were looking for some entertainment, maybe to win a couple extra bucks if they were lucky. These days, our reasons are much more innocent. They just, people just want to have fun. It's a game. You want to beat your high score. You want to beat your friend's high score. And also, you know, today, everything is virtual. You have video games, you have Wii's and Kinects and all this other cliche stuff. It's fun to talk about. Pinball is a game that's highly physical. You know, it's, it's wild, it's crazy, it's out of control. There's no programming that can account for friction and physics and anything the ball could do. And a kind of layer of unexpectedness, of unpredictability, I think is really appealing to people. I love pinball, and I might even love it more now that I know it was illegal. I have fond memories of playing pinball as a child. What are some of yours? I'm Molly, and this is Rocket Boom.